Oh, here's the mic. Okay. How has your week been? I hope it has been very good. Thank you for joining Satan and Janie Slash on the, on the Corpus Paint Show. We're here every week, man. We appreciate you joining us, and I hope everything is going well in your world. We invite you to elevate your life by going underground. And what we mean by that is supporting independent film. We cover horror. And supporting independent music we cover metal of all stripes and extreme punk we're our sister station is actually a live radio station a um a uh a radio station on corpsepaint.net that is our internet radio station and that works in in uh, brotherhood with this weekly tv series about heavy metal and horror so in a moment we'll bring out our guest janie slash it's uh, it's Gene. You talked to him, interviewed him at Frightmare. Yes, Frightmare. Gene Palabicki, and he calls his metal band horror metal. I like it. Horror metal. Doesn't that just square perfectly with this show? Absolutely. <laughs> so, You're so sincere this this evening. Uh, <laughs> I like it. I think that I didn't have to cover my ears because you weren't so loud. Okay. Are we seeing a new well, side of Satan? Well, it does. The it, fact that your lower third said "fired up." Fired up. It does. Uh, you know what? I'm fired up. I'm fired up. We're inside. not dancing right now. I'm fired up inside. It doesn't have to be all volume. Dancing with you are. <laughs> hey, so we're gonna cover later in the show. We're gonna cover some cool movies, new movies. We're gonna also talk about the exhibit we witnessed in Fort Worth yesterday. You mean the one we went to see? Yes, Takashi. Visually mm, that guy. stunning and amazing. Murakami. Right Thank you, in your face. Thank you, Ziggy. See, I know his first name. Ziggy knows his second name, his last name. So together we will get this. Takashi. Murakami. <laughs> I like <laughs> it. All right. Now, our I hope I can call you friend, Gene Palabicki. We're going to connect with you right now, man, on uh, on Google Hangouts. So let's talk live via video. We're here in Dallas. He's somewhere in Florida, I think. The home of death metal, you know, uh, Florida. So we'll try and get Gene on. That was a great video you did of him talking about Song of Solomon. I didn't do the video. I interviewed. Him. Interview. Okay. That would be Little Spark Films that did the video. Thank you. And speaking of Little Spark, we're gonna we're gonna talk about their Indiegogo campaign, their um, their yeah. fundraiser later on in the later episode. in the show, yes. for sure. Um, but you talked to him about Song of Solomon. We were able mm -hmm. to see an advanced we screen. Saw it. Yes. I know, at Frightmare, which is so badass. Mm -hmm. They've got a real premiere coming up in Los Angeles, and we'll talk to Gene about that, too. So It's on Friday Hello. the 13th. Hello, Gene. Hello, Gene. Hello. Can everybody hear me okay? Yes. I can. Can you hear us? Great. <laughs> Sounds perfect. Great. Good. So you've got the Corpse Paint Show with Satan, and, of course, Janie Slash. She's the one who interviewed you at Frightmare, and uh, that was all about Song of Solomon. We do want to get to that. But, you know, we're a metal show, metal and horror, and I, I just uh, respect all the guitar work you've done and, uh, you know, for, for, for all the bands, man. Angel Corpse and uh, just killing it on some of those strong releases and uh, of Lucifer and Lightning just stands out in my mind. Um, and the song I like the most on that one is, is it Hex and Sabbath? Uh, I think if I've got the title right. Um but your new band is Perdition Temple, and you're a str yeah. you're a strong three piece. Can we describe it as black thrash death? It's a combination of everything. I mean, 
all the music that I write has elements of, of uh, material that, you know, comes from the time I was a teenager up until last week, for that matter. <laughs> um, you know, so be it, you know, early heavy metal, speed metal. I mean, I was 13 around the time when uh, things like, you know, Hell Awaits and Rain and Blood and Darkness Descends were new albums or Pleasure right. to Kill from Creator and any of that. Yeah. So all of that stuff had a real big impact on me at that point, and a lot of it wasn't just the speed, but it was the intricacy of the guitar work and, and, and such, and the combination of lyrics and music and all of that together, so that when the 90s rolled around, things I picked up most was the uh, the more rapid fire, I guess, blats beat type drumming. And I thought it would be great to try to, you know, take that new, more intense type of drumming and compile that with the intricacies of the, the speed and death metal type music that I'd already been uh, exposed to for several years ahead of that. And then that all of that slowly evolved into what became the, the sound of uh, some of my early projects, which led up to uh, mid nineties of starting the Angel Corpse band. Yeah. And yeah. points beyond after that. So, so the two guys you've got with you in Perdition Temple are not, they're not Angel Corpse guys. Well, between 2016 uh, and part of 2017, there were some uh, reunion Angel Corpse live performances that we'd done. Uh, there was never an intention of doing a new album, but we wanted to do a series of live shows to commemorate the the, the 20th anniversary of the band's inception and also to go along with some uh, LP reissues that had come out around the same time. The drummer that played with us for the majority of those shows is the uh, Perdition Temple drummer, Ronnie All right. Palmer. All right. And uh, so so he'd already been playing with me for Perdition Temple, so he was a, a perfect crossover to bring into the... Uh, into the into the angel corpse material for those reunion shows yeah um yeah. because the the two bands the pro, artistically out of any of my projects the angel corpse and perdition temple material are probably the uh, the most kindred out of the bunch because a lot of the uh the perdition temple material picked up after the official ending of the angel corpse band back in 2009 Okay. I immediately uh, picked up uh, with new material with the with the Perdition Temple band. So, Perdition Temple really was the follow up band and is the follow up band uh, yeah. musically yeah. and artistically for me from the Angel Corpse project. Love it. Now, I don't know if a lot of fans know this, but Angel Corpse toured with Watain. Wasn't it Watain's first U.S. tour? Yes, were... it was. That was in 2007. Uh, majority of those shows were on the East Coast. Mm -hmm. uh, it was their first time to the States. And if you know anything about a Watain show, yeah, uh, um, they can get pretty smelly. Yes. yes. And so... <laughs> that was their first tour in the U.S. So most of the venues had no idea what was coming. And I, I can't remember which cities, but from what I heard, some of the cities that we played at... Uh, for a week, two weeks after that, some of the places had to shut down, have hazmats, crews comes in. Um, great <laughs> well, times. Well, <laughs> all right. The, I thought you were going to say that some of the venues heard what was up, what was forthcoming and decided to cancel some of the, some of the dates or something, but, uh, no, they, they had, they had no preparedness. I mean, there was right. some drama that happened after a few of the shows. Yeah. Um, with some of the venues, but uh, everybody got out of it alive. Let's just say that. Yeah, man. That's well, the important part. And so, okay, so you're on the van and and you're touring with them, and uh, so I hope that 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 you were not not affected too badly by the smell <laughs> of rock now, carcass. After after a few days, you kind of adjust to it. Right. I mean, the first few nights it was it was pretty strong, but <laughs> uh, I mean, you adjust to it. I mean, even even about a month after after the tour was over, I I'd, I'd been sitting home and I was playing my guitar, and I thought I was just remembering the smell, 
and I, I felt it really strong that I smelled it, and I had to look around, and I flipped over one of my guitars, <laughs> and <laughs> sure enough, there was still a piece of matter oh. that was still on, that, that somehow got on the back of one of my guitars, and of course, in the lining of my boots, yeah. some of that, because a lot, few of the shows they'd play before us, so the stage was pretty stopped out on there. But, you know, man, I, I got to say that some of that created an energy, just that that rawness of the whole thing and, and how ripe it was. And it was a, I, I don't recall it being during the cold months that we did this. Yeah. So, I mean, after a few days of it, you just started to kind of pick up on it. And it kind of gave, you know, and I you know, I can kind of see where, where bands like Watain or others that partake in that, you know, might get an energy from that. There's something that comes from it. Um, cool. cool. You know, so I, I, I can't say it's a terrible thing. Yeah, I no, yeah. I agree. Look, so is it fair to say that Watain opened for you on a few dates? Well, we were we were the headlining band on that, but they have a, they had a bit of an elaborate stage show, so there were. Um, a few dates where just just to keep the show rolling and keep keep times within reason and not have a, an hour between changeovers for the bands we we ended up having them play some of the shows ahead of us gotcha yeah you know there were some other good bands that came out with us on that too uh, uh, a band called negative plane uh, which was some friends of ours from Florida at the time they eventually moved up into areas like New York I believe but uh, with some of their very first shows in the U.S. too, a great band. If you've never heard of them, check them out. Negative right. Plane. Negative Plane. We'll, we'll do. Last question about Angel Corpse. Can we get the Inexorable on vinyl now? Yes. Cool. Yes, uh, back in 2000, uh, late 2015, 2016, there was reissues of the first three albums, which was Hammer of Gods, uh, the Exterminate album, and also the Inexorable. They came out in uh, regular editions. Uh, there was a colored vinyl editions that came with a, uh, yeah. uh, a turntable slip mat. And then there was also picture disc editions that came out as well. Now, it's been a few years since those came out, so some of them might be... You might have to go to eBay to get, but yeah. if you go to osmosproductions.com, yep. look it up. Yeah. Uh, they might still have copies on hand there. The U.S., the United States distributor for those uh, is um, hellsheadbangers.com. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. Um, whichever side of the drink that you're on at uh, Europe or America, those are the two places to hunt those now. Gotcha. All right. So Perdition, Perdition's Temple, latest is The Tempter's Victorious. And uh, love the love the imagery on that cover as well. Uh, Perdition Temple, and and then the last song on it is, is it called uh, Devil's Blessing? Devil's Blessed. Devil's Blessed. Devil's Blessed. I like the lyrics. Uh, do you write the lyrics? You probably do. For all, yeah, the, all the, yeah. for the Perdition Temple material, I've written all the lyrics and all the music. Yeah, you, you went into a dark space, man, and, and I love it. I freaking love that. Yeah, the thing that the thing to take away from a lot of the lyrics, especially on the Tempters Victorious album, is that it's not so much just specifically the subject matter of what a to, what a song is about, but um, the mindset behind the ideas that are that are going on in the lyrics. Because sometimes some of the phrasings of the lyrics might even seem like something that's almost juvenile at times. Um, Whereas the next line of lyrics or the next phrase lyrics might be, you know, something with like lots of syllables in the words and very, be very highfalutin. Yeah. But yeah. the idea is that some phrases of the lyrics are are meant to represent really primitive mentalities yeah. and yeah. how they might interpret a certain act. Especially in Devil's Blast, it's it's really just a sequence of different types of mindsets that are behind the ideas that are being talked about it's a commentary on a, one particular subject but uh, various subjects related to that sort of fanaticism agreed um i like it a lot we we 
want to let all our viewers and listeners know Perdition's Temple is Gene's new band. And uh, they've Perdition got Temple. Perdition Temple. Apologize. Yeah. And te the Tempters, that's where the S is. Victorious is the new release. You've got three out, two full length, and an EP. Uh, so check out. We've got the logo right behind us on our green screen Perdition Temple. Hell yeah. Now. Yeah, it's a great logo that was done by uh, Christopher Moyen out of France. Uh, Long-time death metal and uh, black metal fans will be very familiar with who that is, and that was a great, uh, great logo that he did for me. I like it when you refer to your your sound as horror metal. <laughs> and I, I got to tell you also, man, uh, I, you probably listened to a lot of Sodom. I don't know, maybe in your early years, because uh, I, I, mm. I, I love that. It is very weak. <laughs> Uh, that's one that's never gone away. I mean, yeah. th things that you come up with when you're a teenager and you're first learning this, you know, getting into this kind of music, learning about it, studying this kind of music. I mean, it's true for anybody from whatever they get taken by. The first things that they get into are always going to be the things that are going to stay with them for the rest of their life. Yeah. I mean, for me, the extreme metal stuff, that's what grabbed me. So, you know, albums like Hella Waits or obsessed by cruelty or persecution mania from sodom those are going to be with me till the day i die yeah. yeah i mean they're just as fresh to be this afternoon as they were 35 30 some years ago see i and they always will be i have a couple of songs like that too i want to write into my will so at my funeral i want this song re on repeat again and again and probably be something by sodom <laughs> good stuff yeah indeed all right so horror metal but now let's shift gears Janie Slash you talked to uh, Gene about Song of Solomon look we, we gotta tell everybody we were lucky enough to see a special screening of Song of Solomon at Texas Frightmare Weekend and so Good this times. yes indeed this is one of the bonus benefits you get attending that festival that conference um, is is being able to see special screenings so the movie really is not even out yet but that you did screen it there. Stephen Biro is the director, and you were both there in attendance for the screening. And wow, what a powerful gross fest this is that I love so much because the demon is trying to whack you in the face <laughs> and by using uh, Bible verses herself, right? And uh, I just, I, I, I love it. I love it. Yeah, there's a lot of exchange with dialogue that uh, moves the story along. It's not just a bunch of rambling, uh, you know, cast the demon out type shouting or anything like that. There's a purpose to all of the, the exorcism dialogue and the progression of uh, which priests do their dialogue, uh, what, what part I play, and... Uh, subsequently other other priest characters play throughout the the course of the film to where we each have our our own space and uh segment of of the whole process of of what's going on in the story okay so Jane, right. Jane slash all right so gene writes all these great lyrics devil blessed you know and, and satan blessed and all this and then he puts on a catholic collar <laughs> to film this movie like so, you should I'm like, just kidding. like I'm one kidding. should if he's playing a priest in a movie and uh I love and it. so they bring in gene because he's like the uber priest to get this strong demon out of his girl i was there right yeah and don't don't give away too much I, she always gets yeah, mad we, we at don't want to yeah. we don't want to right. i do get into i will spoiler that's why i tried to be as vague as i yes. could but see, all right see. yeah we don't we don't want to ruin it he moved he moved further away from me because i used to kick him <laughs> but i wear my platform Okay, so right, we're we're not gonna. You know, I think I think it actually character-wise works well for me because of because of well maybe my own personal disposition on a lot of subjects, but uh, the fact that the character is portrayed in a way in the film to where it it gets to the point in a, in certain spots where it can be questionable whether or not it's a good idea to have this guy as the priest to try to do this exorcism to save this person mm -hmm. um, to where it might it might almost be a situation where 
this this priest might be so aggressive in, in, in his way of handling it that he might be just more concerned with beating the demon whether or not that the victim survives or not. There you go. You know, so we tried to convey that in the film that this might this might be a little bit more of a, a dangerous type of individual to put into the situation uh, that could be more of a more of a threat than a help. You know, and hopefully we pulled some of that off in the, in the yeah. production. I mean, you were battling it. Your character is battling their own demons, right? That's kind of the exactly part about like these a, a troubled priest, a, dis a disturbed priest. Wow. I said that, didn't I say that? Yes, disturbing yes. a priest. Disturbing <laughs> a priest. <laughs> yes. That album, that album rocks. Yeah. Don't, any, yeah. don't ever let anybody tell you otherwise. Right. Now, what we can say is this is, the, uh, this is the fourth, right? In the American Guinea Pig. It's the fourth installment of the American Guinea Pig series. It, it would be the third installment in the American Guinea Pig series. Um, is sacrifice fourth? Then? You're gonna you're gonna see a lot of uh, release stuff where you may not see you may not see that as part of the actual title on DVDs okay. and such. Um, but yeah. technically, it's the third in okay. the American Guinea Pig series of uh, productions. Okay. Um, that the the Domiziano, Cristofaro, and uh, Poison Rouge film Sacrifice technically would be the fourth one. Oh, okay. So I didn't know. Because they still, I know they yeah. did a sneak preview of it last year in 2017 of Sacrifice. So yeah, some film before. festivals that we've had it at, we've we've nicked off the American guinea pig or AGP uh -huh. from, uh, from a title because there's some places that are, there's a, there's a notoriety to the, the American guinea pig or guinea pig films that certain markets uh, get scared off from that. And we yeah. want people to be able to see the film. We want it to be able to be presented at certain film festivals. So in some places, I, I think even this Texas screening that we did, it was presented as just the Song of Solomon without the mm -hmm. American guinea pig series, the Song of Solomon. Yeah. If, if I recall yeah. correctly, uh, that that's an example of that same movie. There's no difference or variation on it. Yeah. It's just that uh, for some festivals, we festivals we keep just. Uh, I mean, several movies have. It as the Song of Solomon. Yeah, several movies have different working titles. You know, it depends on where you're at, what country, where it's being distributed. That's the way to get it seen more often. Is you have to pick something that'll appeal to the audience. Maybe if it's something that's that controversial, it's better to avoid that. It's still the same film at the core. It still kind of belongs in the series. It's just relieving off that part of the title. Yeah, it's for the most part just for film festivals and some of the distribution channels. Hey, you got to get your movie distributed. You have to get it seen. Sometimes you have to. At least you're not cutting the movie. I mean, if all you're doing is cutting off the first three, you know. Oh yeah, yeah. There's, there's, yeah. there's no uh, punches pulled on this one. I mean, anybody that's seen it, you've seen it. Mm -hmm. um, we don't back off with anything on this yeah, one. Yeah, I'm a huge fan of the original Guinea Pig series and the American Guinea Pig series. I like extreme horror. I appreciate everything. I'm so I'm definitely a fan. Yeah, for for fandom, um, me stepping into this the film activity isn't much of a stretch in my opinion, because Technically, probably from the time I was four or five years old, I started seeing horror movies when I was a kid on TV, eventually in theaters and such. And I mean, that that stuff has eaten me up just as much as music has. So to actually be actively involved in film production is not is not a weird step for me at all. And uh, I'm interested hmm. to see uh, where it might go for the future. Good. All Good. right. I, I see what you're implying. Tell us about where you'll be next week friday the 13th friday the 13th uh july 13th that is going to be los angeles california baby yeah and uh that's going to be a split uh split event where uh, probably about 7 30 or 8 o'clock at night we're going to do the screening uh the 4k uh the first time that we're doing a 4k uh screening of uh, Song of Solomon and then just next door to where that um, I think it's called the I forget the name of the place it's like the LA Independent or something is the name of the theater yep 
Dead right next to that is a, uh, a known metal club called the Five Star Bar. It's uh, downtown Los Angeles, and there's going to be a after party show. So the screening will precede the show. So anybody that wants to see the movie is not going to miss any of the bands. Uh, so the movie will play. That'll wrap up probably by about 10 o'clock at night. Starts at like 7.30 or 8 o'clock or something. Give people time to get in the door. Uh, first band is going to be a, a band called Infernal Damnation, followed by another band called Diablos, which I believe are both relatively local to the Los Angeles area. Then uh, some friends of mine from the band uh, called Void Ceremony, they'll be playing. And then uh, we'll be closing up the show with a tradition temple performance. Yeah. yeah. Now, I, great times. we were showing the flyer for it as well. And so I think it's it's only $12 if you want to see the movie or 12 for the bands, but 20 bucks to see it all. There it is. We've got yeah. it up on the screen. Yeah, you get a little bit of a discount if you want to come out and see the whole the whole shebang. That's a hell of a deal. It is. A, 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 a premiere screening plus was it four, four bands yeah. in independent okay. L.A. So, Ziggy, do you mind popping that up one more time? It's... um. We just want to make sure they get the name of the theater correct. It's Downtown Independent Theater. Yeah. And that's on Main Street. Yeah, the Downtown Independent. Yeah. I don't have the address right in front of me. I mean, I don't know if you're looking on like a website or something or the banner ad, but the address is on that. Yeah, Main Street, uh, Los Angeles. And then the, the bands perform at the Five Star Bar. Yeah. Which anybody from LA into metal is going to know where the five star bar is because there's a lot of shows that pass through there. Oh, excellent. Oh, nice. We are going to be in Arizona that weekend. Otherwise, uh, I'd, I'd fly out there. We're going to be in Arizona. Yeah. We are. We're going to, we're going to horror fest out there, but, but the place to be is LA for a song of Solomon premiere. 12 bucks to see that movie or $20 to see all the bands as well. Do the $20 deal. Do the 20 yeah. Do the 20 See Perdition Temple close out the night. Jimmy, yeah. good times, man. Real good times. We've got a short, uh, if you don't mind, can uh, can we play a short video that I found online of Perdition Temple? And here is the, bl the band. It, you know, it's got this great rhythm section, just, just, just powerhouse. And then you take this flight of, uh, of of guitar that just sort of pulls pulls back, and just you you've got you've got the strong rhythm, and then all this all this lead as well, and uh, uh, it looks to me like you do it all. And and uh, I read somewhere you play every instrument. I don't know if that's true, Gene. Well, I mean, I play the guitar. I mean, I play the guitars. And... Yeah, bass and and, uh, and guitar. So. I mean, on some of the recordings, I did the the, the bass guitar work, but uh, only on the first Perdition Temple album. And then uh, I did vocals on uh, the first album, and uh, we had a, we had a different vocalist on the second album. Uh, and now, and now with the lineup that I have now is uh, uh, the vocalist uh, bass player Alex Bloom, who has previously played with me on some recordings I did with a band called Blasphemy Cruelty. You know, so that, nice. we got a close knit network of people, so uh, things work out pretty well. Yes, very good. Yes, very good. We're, we're going to pop this up for just a minute, and then come right back to you. This is um, this is some live footage of Perdition Temple. <laughs> Yes. I don't know if you can hear that, Gene. You've got some fast fingers there, my friend. That is some that is nice, just man. 
That is just in your face metal. I love it. And that's the way Song of Solomon is. So we highly encourage well, anyone. Yeah, I mean, the, you know, I, I mean, I got I got to say I influence wise. I mean, it's change. You know, it's not a musical thing, but I guess the approach to performance or artistic performance. I tried to draw a little bit of like what I try to put into my music. I tried to draw a little bit of that same sort of oomph yeah. into the performance for the film as well. I mean, at least with, with, with the more minor role that I had in the previous uh, uh, American guinea pig called Bloodshock, you know, I tried to do it there too, but you know, it, it's a whole different ball game with the Song of Solomon one. Yeah. You know, and... Uh, yeah, yeah, and you know, when it comes to guitar solos and such, they're just totally going crazy with it. I mean, that's part of heavy metal. I mean, there's a lot of uh, a lot of metal people uh, in our modern times that think, oh, guitar solos are just so old or so, you know, grandpa metal or something. But you know, hell with that. Yeah, hell with you know, that. Heavy heavy metal is supposed to be about loud and obnoxious yep. i don't care if it's hard rock heavy metal death metal black metal you need to have something that's just supposed to blow shit up <laughs> you know and having crazy whack guitar solos has all been part of that i yeah. mean i'll never i'll never sacrifice that that's great i, that's great. I saw some smoke awesome. coming up from the neck of your guitar <laughs> gene that's great stuff man god perdition Thanks, temple man. Perdition Temple. And look, we wish you the best on the 13th. And uh, so anyone, look, anyone who's within a thousand miles of Los Angeles, make plans now to just drive there. <laughs> you have two weeks. We've been promoting the hell out of it. We've been trying to get anybody that we know to come out to that, especially people from the West Coast. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, on the Facebook in. short notice typically shows you want to try to like events of shows of any kind you want to try to book them probably two three sometimes more months out uh this one we only had about a month out uh but we're doing our we're doing our damnedest to try to make sure we can reach everybody that we can mm -hmm. uh i believe there's a few other competing shows going on the same night so we've got some uh We've got some work cut out for us, but uh, hopefully we've got some some people that want to check it out. Yeah, man, there's all that's always a case. There's always competition, but this is Song of Solomon. This is the premiere. Look, did is this the film that you and Stephen Biro wanted after you've wrapped it and finished it, watched it? Was it is this what you envisioned? I think within within our means. And, uh, you know, all the blood, sweat, and tears, and everything else that went into it. I think we got as close to it as we would, could possibly have gotten. And we, in some places, I think we exceeded our mark. I mean, when me and Steven were originally talking about some of the ideas, some of the gore gags, uh, some of the things that, that we wanted to have go into the film, you know, the things you have in your head when you're starting, <laughs> are probably things that would be a half a million dollars or $10 million budgets to be able to produce. Gotcha. You know, then once you get into, into the guerrilla warfare to actually do the production and using what you've got on hand, the resources, the people, everything you've got, you know, that then you, you start to get a more clear picture of what it is that you're trying to do and what you're able to achieve. And I think we really nailed it. We had a really strong team of effects people with Marcus Cook and Jeremy Cruz. Anybody that follows the uh, the, the indie horror scene is going to know both of those names are top shelf guys. Mm -hmm. um, uh, James Van Bever's in this. Anybody that's a fan of uh, Dead Beat at Dawn or uh, Manson Family, here you yeah. go. Do yeah. movie with James Van Bever. Uh, Jessica Cameron's done a bunch of stuff. Uh, she did a phenomenal job. Mm -hmm. She was never mm -hmm. off. Um, there, there, somebody posted online a picture of her talking on a cell phone one time. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, is when she was doing her, her, her filming, between takes, whenever the camera wasn't on her, she was rehearsing the lines for the next take. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, when you're on a set, 
you know, doing sometimes 12 or 18 hours of work. And between even when the cameras are off of you, that you're still having to do some kind of work to make sure that you're on your game. So it can actually get really draining. So mm -hmm. there, there's a lot of things I learned from some of the other people on there too. Uh, some of the technique, techniques that uh, Jessica used to prepare for her performances, uh, David McMahon, one of the other uh, characters, uh, one of the other priest characters, he, he had some techniques that he used. So I tried to pick up on some of that to get ready for it. Cause this, this, this film is really dialogue heavy. It is. You know, yeah. Compared to what I did in Blood Chalk, which was about two or three or four lines throughout the whole movie, just kind of one liners. Mm -hmm. uh, this one was like real blah, 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 mumbo jumbo. But it's all yeah. meaningful. Yeah, yeah no, it, 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 all, it all contributes. All, all. But it's all content. It's just that it's a lot of stuff, and it's not just English. There was uh, Latin lines. Yeah, and, and you had to try to do Latin lines, understand what the hell the Latin lines meant, and then try to emote in the context mm -hmm. of the Latin line. Indeed. So it was a bit of a jump, bit of a jump for everybody that had to do this. Right. My hat's off to everybody a part of that production. It's not easy. And Stephen Barrow, I hope you're listening, man. We recognize it's not easy to make a movie. It ain't. And it's a lot the, of work. All those names you mentioned, man, we highly respect. Marcus Cook and... and um, Jeremy Cruz. Yes. Yes. And, and look, let's be clear. This is an exorcism movie, and Satan is strong in this film. I think it makes The Exorcist look like Disney. That's what this movie is and so i highly encourage anyone to go out and see that premiere on july 13th independent theater in downtown los angeles that's really flattery man thanks for the thanks for the comment I, th I think we did a bang up job on the movie i mean it's a, it's a bit of a different animal than what you get from just watching a movie like the exorcist i mean i love i love the exorcist i'm not going to take i'm not going to take any shot at it there's other exorcism films too that have come out over the years that i've liked as well for different reasons like uh uh, uh, Antichristo, I think uh, the Italian movie with uh, Mel Ferrer. You know what I'm talking about? I'm, Anyways, uh, I'm, I'm drawing a blank. I'm sorry. Yeah. And, you know, and others okay. over the years too, and I think ours is a, a bit of a different animal. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the influences that went into the film, we wear on our sleeve. I mean, there's a few scenes that are immediately going to make certain certain past directors come to mind. I mean, there's a scene in the movie that. Immediately is going to make any fan of this stuff think of uh, Lucio Fulci. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Anybody that's seen Song of Solomon or is going to see it, a, a fan of Lucio Fulci, when they when they see the scene that I'm talking about, they're going to go, "Yeah, that was influenced by Lucio Fulci." And you want to know what? Yes, it was. <laughs> <laughs> right. Look, she scares me. the 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 possessed woman in this film scares the shit out of me. And she did a great, great job. And I don't know. She, I don't know. It's like her eyes are boring right into me. Steven, Steven filmed it. She did it. It's a great, it, it, it's a scary, scary movie. I love the gore Thanks too. Thanks a lot. Yeah. All right. So Gene Pelabicki, thank you, man, for spending time with us. And again, Song of Solomon. Can we call it world premiere? July. It would be the Los Angeles premiere. There we go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> July. Yeah. Friday the, Los Friday the 13th, so that works, of course. That's uh, in, in t less than two weeks in uh, Independent Theater downtown Los Angeles on Main Street. And then, of course, the four metal bands at Five Star Bar right next door. And the whole shebang for only 20 bucks. See the film and then follow it immediately by some great metal. This is, this is a metal movie followed by live metal. Horror metal. Should be really good times. Gene, um... Man, before we say uh, adios, what else is on your mind right now? Um, you know, um, I... A bunch of new stuff. Um, we're, we're, we're putting together a few other shows that we're going to do to round out the year for the Perdition Temple Band. Okay. Uh, okay. We're also about to dive heavily into the work on the new album. Great. Uh, the new album, which will be called uh, Sacraments of Dissension. You and heard it here so first. Uh, yeah, yeah. And then also there's going to be um, coming out very soon, possibly even in the next uh, week or so, which I might have copies for the L.A. screening. Uh, there's going to be the special edition, two disc edition of Tempter's Victorious album that's coming out. Oh, no kidding. What that is, it's going to be a digipack. It's going to have the original released 
version of the album in there, but as a bonus disc, a second disc, it's going to have the full album alternate version with my vocals instead of uh, instead of the uh, the previous vocalist. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was a recording that we'd made during the time of uh, the production of the album, and so you get an alternate full version of the album. It also includes as bonus tracks the the seven inch EP Sovereign of the Desolate and then alternate versions of those two songs from the seven inch. So it's it's a two disc special edition digipack of Tempter is Victorious that should be literally out within about the next week or so. And you want to know what? You're the first ones to hear. About yeah. It. <laughs> All right. Yes. And yeah, like you said, hopefully you might have some of those at the Song of Solomon screen. We might. Yeah. It's a question of whether or not they show up in the mail in time to sure. be here for me to take them out there, which it's pretty damn close. Yeah, gotcha. All right. So, look, otherwise, how would someone get their hands on that? Oh, hellsheadbangers.com, okay. the label. We, we like that label a lot, Gene. We do. And yeah, and they're well distributed, too. So, I mean, if you don't get it directly from them, uh, local vendors that sell CDs and shows usually have Hell's Headbangers products mm -hmm. or internet internationally um you know it, it'll be out it'll be it'll be out and distributed because they, they have a very wide international distributorship good and, and look believe it or not here in dallas a few a few can you believe it new independent record stores have opened in the last couple of years and um one of them we were just at yesterday is called born late records but um, but it is good and refreshing to see, and I think all of that is kind of being led by vinyl. But all these shops here locally, anyways, have plenty of CDs too. So okay. there's a video store that opened up here in Tampa, Florida, a few years ago called Grind the House Video, and the guy started it. Looked like it was a hole in the wall. Uh, it's a guy named Mike Stanman. Uh, if you look it up, it's a grindhouse video, of Tampa, Florida. They even got like a Facebook page and all that. But when he started, it looked like something that you would see just at a, at a rummage sale. Just a couple of bins of just, you know, <laughs> mismatched DVDs, etc. Yeah. And slowly but surely, he got a few more titles and he started to get a few special orders come in. And it just, you know, flash forward a few years later now, what it would have been like three or four years now. He's got a full-size store, huge selection of pretty much, if you can name a DVD title that's part of like horror films or exploitation films, he's got it on the shelf. Right. And if it's not in the new stock, it's in the used stock. And then there's the back room of the place that's so loaded with VH. And, and, and you know, you really can't believe that a store like that could even start out a few years ago yeah. and to become yeah. as, as, as rent, it, it's a great place to visit. Anybody that wants to find like the lost video stores of America, yeah. if they ever come to Tampa, they want to go to Grindhouse Video. Grindhouse yes, Video. Mike, if you see this, I'm giving you a plug. <laughs> Way to go, buddy. <laughs> Gene, that's great. Thank you, man. All right. So you mentioned you mentioned the two disc of of Tempters Victorious by Perdition Temple. Uh, that'll be in in the next uh, ten to fourteen to twenty days. And, uh, and then um, Sacraments of Dissension, you mentioned, is the title of the new release you guys are working on for Perdition Temple. Yeah, that'll be the name of the new full length. We're probably going to do a preceding EP again like we did the last time. Uh, I guess it's just something that's going to become a habit that we'll do is we like to get some kind of EP single to go out uh, around the same period as the release just to make more out of it. Man, let's Don't stay. Don't title for that one yet, but uh, okay. it'll come in time. Let's stay in touch, Gene, and maybe on the flip side, we can get a report from you on how the how the premiere Los Angeles premiere went, and uh, and just stay in touch regarding Sacraments of Dissension and other other stuff you you've got forthcoming. So let's just stay in touch. Sure. Man. I, I I would be honored to call you a friend, and I hope that you would be a friend of a Corpse Paint show, and that we see you soon, man. All right, well, thanks for the support for the film, for, for any of my stuff, and uh, till I see you all next time. Yes, indeed. Our best to Stephen Barrow as well. Janie, go ahead. For sure. Okay. Yep. Well, thank so you. All right, I have a good night. Yes, thank you. Thank you, you Gene. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. You know, he's talking about Grindhouse in Tampa. Yes. <laughs>
we were at Born Late yesterday. Yes, we were. We were now, also at this store called Horror Freak, which is new. It just kind of opened up in Bedford, Texas. It's pretty cool. They've got some uh, horror collectibles, uh, different types of Living Dead dolls, all kinds of movies, various different Ouija boards. Also, rare and hard to find DVDs. It's kind of new. It's only been open for a few weeks, so I kind of hope that maybe it'll be like Grindhouse Video. Maybe it'll grow. You remember the Lucifer's Lambs? They even had Laserdisc there. <laughs> Do you remember the Lucifer's Lambs? Yes, they had Lucifer's Lamps. They were made with x-rays. I wanted one. X-ray sheets as the uh, as kind of the lamp lampshade. I had boob on it. <laughs> what? We had breast implants. Yeah, it was made like a breast implant x-ray. You could see the breast implant. You could see a lighter in the guy's pocket. All right. Like, so it was two different x-rays, by the way. The, and, it was and a butt a, and a boob. Did you mention Zombie Gear? I wanted it. Because we went to Zombie Gear, too. Yeah, we did. Our sponsor on this show is the, Corpse Factory. Is the Corpse Factory. Where you get uh, your corpses. Well, clothes for your corpses. Clothes for your corpses and... Or your living body. That corpse that's factory. My, uh, that's my favorite Toby Keith song, Clothes for My Corpses. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Make sure that they get some clothes. You made me look, clap. Look, the, the, we're showing the website right now. The Corpse Factory supports this show, and we appreciate Brandon so much. He runs a great business. Check he out his... He does. You can get amazing clothing from there and accessories. They carry brands such as Creepsville 666, Rock Rebel... I like it. I know you have a lot of stuff. <laughs> Living in, Dead Dolls. That's right. All kinds of amazing things. Lounge fly purses. Thank you, Corpse Factory. I love them. They will be at a uh, haunt convention. I can't remember the exact name, but it's on August 19th. The one in Dallas. Yes. Yes, that is a cool little convention. It's going to uh, be for... amazing. If I was here, I would be there. I won't be here, but if I was here, I would be there. Gotcha. Because they're going to have Stuart Brayton, who is a freaking FX wizard, hosting an amazing workshop on how to create and apply prosthetic. No kidding. Yes. That's badass, too. Look, He's amazing. So... He's worked on, like, incredible shit. What's his name? Stuart Bray. Stuart Bray. Yes, yeah. he's lovely. When we he's went to Born Lake Records... Talented. I'm going to hand these to you. You read the title. Yeah, it's hard to read the front. You I don't have back. glasses on. Okay, it's Sacrilegious Impalement. Maybe, maybe if I don't have glasses, then I can read these metal But I want you to it's, say it in the most evil way. It's Sacrilegious Impalement. Why are you asked me to read it, and then you told me what it says. Sacrilegious Impalement. How about this one? They're a Swedish this punk metal band. This is a weird band. fucked up game. Mass grave. Think. Napalm over Sturplen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mass grave. Swedish punk. They're extreme. This is a British that band look called the, like a punk band. the Meads of Asphodel. Yeah, picked that up at uh, Born Lake. I love this. Hey, will you read these for me? I'm going to tell you what they say. Okay. That's a game. But you say it in your most demonic voice. This one? Chapel. And the title down there? Satan's Rock and Roll. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> By Chapel. Uh, anyways, my point is, all that good, hard to find, good underground, black metal, thrash metal, extreme metal. This is, is this is interesting. It's guys in knights costumes. Yeah, it's it's. It looks like if Monty Python and no, Holy no, Grail don't made make a fun. Metal don't make fun. Hey, I am a look. huge fan. All right. Never heard them before. I'm sure they're incredible. <laughs> all right. So that was. Uh, I don't know. Did I, I, I wasn't even looking. I, I bet Ziggy probably showed their cool logo thing, which is, yeah, that one right there. Born Late Records. They're on Race Street in Fort Worth, Texas. Independent record store. So we support independent bands. We also sell DVDs, T-shirts, memorabilia. The, uh, uh, and tattoos. And tattoos and cassette tapes. They do. I bought a cassette tape. Did you really? I did. I what bought did a cassette I didn't bring it. What did you buy? I, I don't know. Some demonic you know metal me, band. I am all about like cassette tapes and vinyl. I didn't bring it. I did not bring it. I have own a one cassette tape. <laughs> it is Iron Reagan. Yeah. And a lot of Which is a modern band. But you own a lot of, of vinyl. I also own their fanny pack. I'm a huge fan of all the shit they put out. I'm still sad that I never got that uh, municipal waste um, Snuggie. Still really heartbroken. I'd be wearing it right now if I had it, even though it's 100 degrees outside in Texas. What do you think about Gene? What a great guy. He's great. Huh? I, mean, I, he's I enjoyed interviewing him at Frightmare. He was a lot of fun. He was cool. He told me about like stuff that happened on set. You got to go watch it though. We're not going to talk about it here. Go to our YouTube channel. Find that interview and watch it. 
Well, metalhead and horror actor, and man, he dovetails perfectly. Hey, they with go this hand show. in hand. That's I right. like it. Now, okay, so Janie Slash, we hey. had some fun hey. yesterday. We're a little informal here. You can call me Janie. <laughs> at uh, the art exhibit, which was Takashi, and it was uh, yesterday we attended. I took Ziggy. a lot of. Takashi Murakami. Thank you. And so here, let's look at some of his artwork. And this is our segment called That's Metal, because look at that face. That's metal. If you are in the Dallas area and you have a chance, or if you're just in Texas, you should definitely come up to the Fort Worth Modern and check out this exhibit. It is amazing. It is it's incredible. Metal. It is beautiful. It is metal. It's all by Takashi. It's a little bit for everybody. It's amazing. Takashi Murakami. Murakami. Oh my gosh, is that me? Now that's Janie Slash in the foreground and you two of his. You can call me Janie. In the foreground and two of his pieces back there, it's the cavemen with clubs. And uh, there's they a look lot like more. Some so, type of like game piece. Oh wait, who's that? Satan. That's you. This was a great exhibit, and is this I like why you would only pieces. wear your sunglasses in all the photos yesterday? Uh, you can't see his eyes. All right, so and. Yeah, I just want I want everyone to see these, this this artwork. There's a good piece right there. A lot of his pieces are, you know, have the sharp teeth and the big ears. You, uh, people know Takashi, right? It, it said he was really impacted by the tsunami. A lot of his art was influenced by that. The 2015 tsunami in Japan. Yes. All right. So this that is a three dimensional piece, and it's kind of a mannequin. She's showing <laughs> off her tush. There were some incredible sculptures there. No doubt. It was amazing. See all the skulls. I think you're banging stuff. It's all right. I'm all good right. at banging there's, things. There's a ton of skulls in his artwork. Sorry. That is just kind of like. my knee? It hit that's, the desk. <laughs> and this one, man with the eyes. I like that one, Janie. Yes. Ooh. All right. Now. Octopus eats its own. That is the name of the art exhibit. And we like art here at the Quartz Paint Show. Especially, especially alternative, unique, badass art. And that is definitely my, fits all of those requirements. Mind expanding. It, it, it definitely is mind expanding when you see Takashi Murakami. Your mind. All right. So we. we okay. We, we talked so much about Song of Solomon and I didn't freaking show the preview, the trailer. So we should do that. Way to be on it, Satan. I know, man. Here he I am. He gets excited about metal and forgets shit. Yeah. Hey, but he remembers it. That's we, the important part. We talked and talked about Song of Solomon and it being a, a, um, a possession movie and exorcist movie, exorcism movie. So let's just watch the trailer. You get a real flavor of this movie from this. Mary, tell me about your dreams. Sometimes I dream that I was enslaved. Enslaved? Mm-hmm. How so? The king of Babylon forced me to be a slave and help him build the tower of Babel. I don't understand. I dream of fire with flames higher than you could ever fathom. Mrs. Caton, may I have a word with you, please? I'm just a family counselor. This is far more than I'm able to handle. We feel the exorcism of this young girl will be unlike the others. That girl could hold the key to all of heaven. It is your task to save her soul. Sand of Jerusalem, make our steps holy. <laughs> our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom. What are you doing? We're here to save you, Mary. I don't need saving. Of the we body of Mary Elizabeth King. Father, Son, Son, the Holy Spirit. I cast thee out. Demon. I don't I cast you out. Oh. No. Wilson. Of the father. Oh. 
and the Son, uh, and the unholy spirit. Uh, May the blood of his servants uh, cleanse you. Uh, oh my god, we gotta help her! Are you okay? It's not over yet. <laughs> You're exciting me. I like this. Yay. Huh. Steven Biro went <laughs> out of this movie will F you up. And I know that's what you'd like. It's called Song of Solomon. Woo! All right. So yes, so we, 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 all right, we had Gene, he's in that movie, Stephen Barrow's director, thank you Stephen, for creating this, uh, this, this, this wild film, and, and there was the trailer. So we've got another sponsor, and that's Little Spark Film. So they're working on The Torturer, mm -hmm. right, which, yes. which stars Paul T. Taylor, who was in the last Hellraiser film, Yes. and they've got a... They're working really hard on this. Right now, they're, uh, they just started the... Uh, Crowdfunder? Yeah, Indiegogo. Yeah. So if you can contribute, even if it's a dollar, or if you can just share it, go to the Little Spark Films uh, Facebook page, and it's up on there. We'll also be sharing it on the Corpse Paint Show, and also I'll share it on my Janie Slash page if you follow me at Janie Slash. And contribute if you can, or at least share it. Let's get it out there. Let's get this done. It's written by Shadow Writer Paul Kane. They did an awesome little promo video for it. And, and we've got that. Yeah. yeah. We've got that. They're, they're, they've got so, a really great team put together. They just need a little help. So if you guys can help, we'd greatly appreciate it. Yep. Good. Well said. All right. So this is their uh, their cool fundraising little tiny video for the torturer. Help! Anyone? Help! Hey everyone, I'm Joe, the director for the new Little Spark film, The Torturer. Are you gonna let me out? Hang tight there, buddy. So, this is Paul. You might recognize him from some films like Sin City, Super, and Hellraiser Judgment. We got a great script written by Shadow writer Paul Kane. It's already been published in a series of short stories called Nail Biters. And get this. It's even currently being adapted into a graphic novel. What's that got to do with anything? Oh, well, Paul, you're going to star in this film, and I'm sorry, but it's going to be brutal. Brutal, huh? Well, yeah. It's a film called The Torture, and it's from a book called Nail Biters. You bet your ass it's going to be brutal. And people watching this video can donate to your pain and suffering, and in return, they can receive some awesome perks listed here between us. sweet suffering so everyone please send us some funds so we can get this thing made and in return you'll receive some awesome stuff till then keep your eyes peeled what should you do? What are you doing don't do that no ah! 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 Oh, okay, so, i get it it was a potato peeler yeah keep your eyes peeled it was go. not actually was that uh, a potato peeler? Well, it was a peeler. All right. So where did you say people should go? Little Spark Films Facebook page? Yes, and then go to link Little Spark to Films Facebook page. You'll see a link to the Indiegogo campaign, and you can click on it and follow there. And you can share it. Donate. Please, if you donate, share it too. Or just if you can, at least share it. Yeah, the torturer. If you're a fan of Clive Barker, like you're going to love this. Yeah, that's right. Paul it's Kane. Be amazing. Yeah, there well, you go. and as you know, Paul T. Taylor was the new pinhead from Hellraiser Judgment. Yeah, Paul T. Taylor. All right, so there's a couple of other. There's a couple of other. Do you like that backdrop? That is the Perdition Temple it's latest album great. backdrop. Yeah, that was that artist yes. he was talking about. All right, so can we shift gears, listen to some reggae, and chill for a moment? And I'm not sure I know how to chill. What do you mean? By okay, chill? we're gonna show a trailer of a. Is it French? I think it's a French film. It's called Custody. And I want you to see this, Janie. This looks wild, okay? Forthcoming film. Our definitions of wild are a little different. So called Custody. It. And then we got another one too I want to surprise you with. Je sais pas lequel des deux qui ment le plus, par exemple. On 
veut juste vivre en paix. Moi, je veux juste prendre une nouvelle de nos enfants. C'est lui Vos enfants sont remontés contre vous, monsieur. Vous. Je sais pas trop remis dans ma tête. On dit pas qu'il est venu. On dit que je vous ai croisé en ville. Tout ce qu'elle fait depuis le début, elle a pas le droit de le faire. Ah, demain, tu portes pas. Ça servira à quoi Attends-moi quand même. Tu sais, ta mère, elle a une bonne montrée des mains qui va lui exploser à la gueule. avec toi là, si pour entendre les mêmes trucs que Si tu vas discuter avec moi parce qu'on a fait deux gosses T'es devenu aussi le menteur que ta mère. Je suis ton père Par contre, s'il y a un point sur lequel vous devez trancher, Madame la Présidente, dans ce dossier, rien n'est blanc des deux côtés. Right, all right, so it's Xavier Lagrand. And French film. So we know how film, uh, horror now is turning inward. It's not so much slasher, it's real life and family, right? It's family. And so this movie is called Custody. It's about a divorce battle. And yeah. That's a gets, little bit of a stretch. It just looked intense. It gets, it's yeah, not intense. Really wild. All right. Well, custody. I mean, divorce Keep is scary. Mind. I Powerful here. Got it. I don't know. I don't, I, that's, I don't think I would watch that. All right. Fair it's enough. interesting. It's interesting. It just doesn't appeal to me. I mean, it looks very well made. It looks like a really good movie. But, it's not my kind of horror, but I understand how you're trying, like, like what you're trying to do. Custody. I understand where you're going. But it's not wild. Anyways, keep it in mind. It's a battle it between spouses. Okay, if, you, if you go see Jurassic over. Park with me. <laughs> so, all right. So on that. now one thing you might be listening to at the moment is the cool website corpsepaint.net. Is that what we're listening to? Yes. And you know this is Joan Jett actually this song I right appreciate here. the social distortion earlier. I just want to point that out. Oh yeah. Oh Thank you're welcome. Thank you for yeah. incorporating oh, you're a welcome. little punk rock for me in there. I mean I So there's Marky Ramone. This is a song kind of girl. This is a song on Marky's solo album with Joan Jett as a um, as a as a guest. And uh, it's called Don't Blame Me. Right. So Mm -hmm. Yeah, way to go, Marky. Marky was a guest on our show last year. It was so good to talk to him at that and time. And where can you see that episode if you would like to see it? Because you missed it. Uh, on the YouTube channel. And what is that? The Corpse Paint Show channel. Ooh. All of our shows are there. It, it is cool. Awesome. All right. So when Ziggy was scrolling on that website, corpsepaint.net, now that's where our radio station is. Uh -huh. There are no commercials. You can just go and listen and have and fun. Listen to great, all the music. Great mix it's of programmed punk. Programmed by Satan himself. Great the mix dark of Dark Lord. <laughs> great mix of punk and metal. Now, next week, did I tell you who our cool guest is? Who is our cool guest next week? You did, but you haven't told everyone else. It's uh, it's Leah Lane. She's going to be in the studio, man, yeah. from our Rose Garden funeral party. Live, July 8th. That'd be so good. Be All right. Thank you for agreeing to come on our show, Leah, and we look forward to speaking to you next time. Yes. All right. There is another trailer I want you to see. Okay, It's called Hover. More of a sci-fi horror film. No, 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 no. no. We is, talked is, about this. Talking about like no, no, we talked about this mm -hmm. recently. Okay, this is about this is about the overuse of drones that spy on oh, you right okay. in your window. Okay, I was thinking of like when you go to the bathroom and you have to hover because that's horrifying. Oh, gotcha. But now we're talking about drones. That's a whole different kind of thing. Okay, I got yeah. you. I no, got I think you. I think I, you... I follow. I follow. Let's just watch it. Just yeah. just go. This is the future go. of horror. It might be right here. Hover. It might be. Sixty-two percent of our planet is in the midst of a catastrophic drought. Countless people have either died or been displaced because of it. Our technology is giving these people a chance. My partner was murdered. I'm looking for answers. Drones. Those things are evil. 
no good come to anyone who got a drum. These new Sentinel drones are developed with the Department of Defense to monitor forward operating bases in hostile environments. Reconnaissance and submission. Submission? No one was on to you. And now Vaspro is trying to destroy anybody that's onto the storm. You can make things right. You know the plan. Both of you go now! We need to get out of here. Okay. Is that a sci-fi channel movie, or is it just by Sci-Fi Films? I'm not sure. Okay. Sci-Fi Films. I think Sci-Fi Films is the company. Okay. But the point is, this is something you could f you could see. I mean, drones are getting I think more I would nimble, just be really, smaller. Really annoyed by something being near me. I mean, I don't really got, do anything to where I'm worried about people here see me. Okay. Let's say, let's say it's in the future annoyance. you had an arrest record, or you were on the lam, or you were on the run. Couldn't a drone, you know, just go anywhere? I'm trying and not to have any you. of those. But but go with me here on the oh, story. Okay. Do you see what I'm saying? So I'm gonna suspend this, my disbelief. Yes. Okay, doing it. For future, do you see that drones could be misused and abused, like in this film? Absolutely. All technology can. Well, I don't know. I, I never thought of drones, but this is a interesting. Thing. Drones are I mean, drones are used to achieve shots that can never really like were really difficult to achieve in movies before. Like drones are doing amazing things for film production. But now they can peer in your window and see what you're doing or where you are. So I'm not really worried about it. Anyways, it's cool. <laughs> I mean, for me, for me, I understand right. others, but I, if if you know anything about me, then clearly you would be aware that I'm not really that worried about it. All right, fair enough. If you just Google Janie Slash, you'll see why, I'm sure. Okay. Don't Google Janie <laughs> okay. Slash, but All right. so I'm joking around. Our director of operations is Mr. Ziggy, and um, Mr. Ziggy is performing Ooh. on Saturday. Ziggy, what you got going on this week? Uh, you can catch me every Saturday at 8 and 10, 15 at the Backdoor Comedy Club. Hey, that's a great little shot of you when you do that with the camera. I think that you, that we should add a lower third, you know, really. We, you know, it's just a, it's a Ziggy stand-up comedian or Ziggy something. Ziggy the funny guy. The guy with the jokes. Yeah, I mean, he keeps us lightened up in this room. He does. He just keeps us going, too. I we, do what I can. Will you create one for next time, Zach? <laughs> uh, we can talk about that off air. <laughs> All right. Now, let's review. We saw the Song of Solomon preview. We saw Hover preview. We saw Custody preview. And we saw some metal. And we saw a fundraiser for The Torturer local film being made now. We you talked can... about Corpse Factory. And indeed, Corpse Factory. And our our uh, um, coursepaint.net website, of course. Yeah. And the new store Horror Freak that we checked out and that awesome art exhibit that we saw what? at the Modern yesterday. All right, so what else you got going on? And is there any... This week, I only have one gig, and that is Friday night at Duke's Ice House in Addison. It's free. It's a burlesque show. It starts at 9 p.m. I don't have a poster for it, but uh, Duke's, House, Duke's Ice House is on Addison Road mm -hmm. off of Keller Springs, off the tollway. It's going to be a good fucking time. I don't have bingo this week. No. So I will be at the Texas Theater watching Alligator in Jaws 5, Cruel Jaws for free. So if you want to come hang out with us, that's where we'll be. Tuesday so come night. chill out with us at the Texas Theater. It's free. Mm -hmm. I'm all about this free thing this week. So, yeah. They have Tuesday what, night trash. What a better way to, you know, start celebrating the 4th a little early mm -hmm. with um, some killer alligators and a killer shark. Hey, you have a great burlesque troupe, too. I have a fantastic Aren't they troupe. all talented? Yes. Well, oh, we went to Buck's Cabaret last night to see one of them perform on silks. Darn right. It was right. beautiful. And Cirque de Cabaret. Yeah. She was incredible. Super now, talented. Think about Fauna. Great artist. Think about Lulu. She is a pinup model. Think uh, think about Blay. He's a 
uh, he's a he's a he's a great dancer, and I'm. <laughs> he's not a great dancer. I like no, how you went straight to that. Okay, no. <laughs> he's a metal I, enthusiast. I desperately have to think of something to compliment him on. <laughs> Evan <laughs> is kicking ass for you, but and then we you mentioned Scarlet. Scarlet's she does so. fantastic aerial work. And then you have Fatty Rage. And you know what, who Velvet, is a Isn't entrepreneur she? and a business owner, and she was at Pride last night. She gave an incredible speech, and she marched at the very front. Fatty Rage is. Uh, just a great example. And yes, Velvet is is a model and a belly dancer. And she's learning to fly. It looks like to get her own pilot's license. I don't know if that's the case, but I she have was... a. I am a part of a burlesque troupe of a bunch of badass chicks and one yep. guy. And Catalina, who's a great, great singer, singer. and director. Yes, and, and producer, don't forget and Rain, actor. your magician and queen of the awesome. vampire court of Dallas does a lot of charity yes. work. She ran a charity 5K yesterday. Why are we still talking about Deadly Sins? Anyway, the next Deadly Sins show is July 21st at Wits, and it is only five dollars. Come check it out. You will not be sorry. Come early for the pre-show. We start at 9:30. Come see the side show Bye. before. Or the main show. My point is, you have a great troupe of uh, amazing performers. I think um, that it's important to unite powerful women and show the amazing mm -hmm. things that they can do. Not only are they amazing entertainers, but in their private life, well personal said. lives, they all do amazing, incredible things. Yeah. Now, um, there's an image I wanted to close of the uh, show on, and I sent it to Ziggy, but we didn't really talk about it. Now, it's uh, the one of the priest lady with her arms extended and I think she's on fire. What are you talking about? No, it's, a, it's like a movie poster that I, I thought was just uh, <laughs> very, very cool imagery and uh, it's for another movie we don't have a trailer for. But yeah, that one right there. Uh, it's called what is the title at the top, Zig? Heret Heretics. Heretics with a K on the end, right? Heretics. Yes. And it's us our sins. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, in the 90s, we burned churches, black metal groups burned churches. We don't condone that. Uh, but this imagery is going to take But we'll burn the shit out of a nun. <laughs> we'll, we'll burn the robe off that nun is what they put it right on the movie poster. The heretic or heretics, heretics. By the way, I just show up here. I know who the guests are. I have no idea what the trailers are or what he's showing. You didn't know that we're going to show a nun on fire? No. Okay. Heretics. Would, it, would, would, would you say that that's a... Uh, None of your business. It's none of my business. Yes, thank you. Correct. Bad habit to get into. But guys. yeah, uh, going back to what I was saying earlier, come to Duke's Ice House in Addison if you're in Dallas area mm -hmm. this Friday. Show the sixth nine of, yes, of July. The 6th mm -hmm. of July. Janie slash, where will you be in two weeks? Where will we both be? We'll be at Mad Monster in Arizona. In Phoenix, right? Yeah, in Phoenix. Mm -hmm. uh, Freddy Krueger will be there. That is a horror Apart convention. From party with Freddy and Jason will be there too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a lot of great horror guests, and uh, it's always fun it to be there. It is one of my favorite, if not my favorite, convention. I always have a good time there. It's always worth the flight. It's always worth the, seeing my Mad Monster family. They're great people. Yes, indeed. The owner, the guys that run it, they're fantastic people. It's just, it's a great convention. Song That's where we met Jeremy Cruz, who worked on Song of Solomon, and his uh, girlfriend, Danny. She'll be there. She's going to be hosting the Mascara Zona pageant, which I'll be competing in for the fourth year in a row. <laughs> I've still never won, and I won't win this year, but it's a hell of a good time, and I enjoy it. Oh, yeah. It's a great fest. Yes. All right. So uh, that song we were just listening to, too, is Lords of Acid. Uh, you can always go to corpsebank.net and uh, check out our radio station there. Yeah. L-O-A. Hey, thanks a lot to Gene Palubicki, our guest. Yes. Regarding you. It was lovely talking to you again. It was. Super what a great metal. guy. Yeah, uh, regarding Song of Solomon and their premiere coming up 13th. Janie Slash, thank you. I know you're busy. You got all kinds of cool stuff coming up. Ziggy, as usual, man, director of operations here. He has uh, a lot of cool runs, shit coming up. But he runs our whole show, and it ain't easy because we're a long that show. That is and we, the guy that makes shit happen. There you go. Thank you. And thanks to you guys, man. Thank you very much for watching. Thank I hope you. your week goes well. We'll be back here next Sunday with Leah Lane from yeah. Rose Garden Funeral Party. We'll be here. Thank you for supporting the Quartz Bank Show. Have a fucking metal week. We'll see you next Sunday. Yeah, the Quartz Bank Show. Every Sunday we're here live. We're going to give you 90 minutes of live, great, irreverent shit. <laughs> and also just talk about Satan and talk about movies and talk about metal and talk about Jenny Slash's uh, weekly dose of horror. Yeah, Texas Friday Weekend. I am here with Dee Wallace.
Don't just don't start my face all the time. Sure. I do get comments from occasionally religious fanatics. I have seen people yeah. stop and down. Who like wag their finger at me for a ring tight. The Gold Space Show rules!